Okay, today we have this lovely example of brilliant rebadging. This is a Hitachi L42 P VP01U. However, there's nothing at all Hitachi about this. This is a Vestel set based on the 17MB26-2 chassis, which is this motherboard. And it comes with a 17PW16-2 power supply. And I'm um, not sure what the part number on that board is. Um, basically, it's a 42 inch generic supermarket TV with a Hitachi badge on it. So, Hitachi have uh, decided it's cheaper to rebadge Vestel garbage TVs as their own and sell their reputation down the toilet. So, the fault with this unit today is that it powers on, everything appears to work, but there's no audio. Um, and after about 10 or 20 minutes of fiddling around, the audio came back suddenly. So, uh, we decided to have a look inside the unit. And the immediate thing we noticed was two bulges there, bulger there, bulger there, and a bulger there. So that's in total five bulging capacitors. So, first thing to do after noticing bad caps is to test the power supply voltages. So, 24 volt measured there on one of the pins of the inverter connector that's red. 24.6, so right, it's a little low. Uh, 12 volt measured 10.58 or so. It's pretty low, really, for 12 volt line. And the 5 volt measured 5.5 volt. The 12 volt has two bulging caps on it, and 5 volt has a bulging cap. And if you follow this line, this 12 volt output, you find it goes over to this DTV board where this capacitor filters it. Now that capacitor is actually quite warm. Um, and these are quite warm as well. What usually happens is these capacitors are designed to filter the output. When they fail, uh, usually that's probably the main one, that fails and then uh, it eventually takes out that one and then suddenly this little one over here has to take all the strain that these two used to take and that fails so it's a fairly catastrophic failure what we've got to be aware of the 5 volt cap there can fail it can also cause the capacitors on the main board to fail they look alright at the moment so they're probably not at fault but um, basically as soon as you have bad caps it's a good idea to replace them don't just leave it because the set works now the fault was intermittent audio and a little bit of analysis of the circuit uh, here it shows the amplifier runs on 24 volt and that appears okay but the audio processing from a little bit of research seems to run off 12 volts so if the 12 volts is a bit low then perhaps the audio processing won't work properly okay so we replaced the capacitors on the power supply they only cost about six pounds um, so the problem unfortunately still remains but now we've got a good 12 volt at 11.6 a little low and our 5 volt is is okay it's about five and a half it's, it's a little high so the main that we have problems with power supply but what i'm trying to track down right now is an intermittent audio issue so a uh, customer says the audio just cut out we had a fiddle around it and the audio suddenly came back and we haven't really managed to get it go wrong since, except for a few moments. So I've been fiddling around for ages, and what I did is I hooked the scope up to the output going to the speakers, and this is the input coming from the main board, because there's a separate amplifier board here. Um, so I was trying to locate whether the fault's on the main board, or if it's on the amplifier board. Another common trick you can do is get some headphones and if the TV supports it, this one does, just plug the headphones into it and listen to the headphone audio. If the headphone audio is good, then quite likely the problem is on the um, audio amplifier, but that's not conclusive. If I touch this transistor gently, see? I reckon that's where the fault is. Something with that transistor uh, on this board, which is the amplifier board. So I'm going to have a look at the schematic and see what I might do. It's uh, Q1, I think. So Q1, might be Q11. So what we found is this base pin, this transistor, just looking at the schematics right now, 
Uh, when I touch that base pin, it's incredibly sensitive. So it may be a little leaky, um, or it may be a poor design here. It appears that Vestel board doesn't, what it does is just let this float high through the leaky junction uh, to make sure it's off and it just pulls it low to mute it. So what I did is to ensure that it stays high um, is I just wired a 1k from there and I got rid of that um, well there's actually a zero ohm jump between these two pins and this connector isn't placed uh, it's not shown on the schematic though that's helpful but um, I, I wired a 1k from the 5 volt here to the base pin so that stays off now the consequence of doing this is nothing at all there's a very tiny pop sound when uh, the TV is turned off and it's so quiet you'd have to put your ears right up to the speakers to hear it so it seems to have sorted the problem out for now I have to leave it going for longer to see if it is a permanent fix but it seems like it might be poor design now sorted out it's a 1k ohm resistor you can solder it on the board from there to there or you can solder it from there to there you must remember to remove the jumper between 6 and 1 or you could damage the main board